But now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite Ruth to come and join us. Hi. Hi, Ruthie. Hey. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I just finished up with a little mini teaching on, on intimacy, intimacy with God, and then really moving into how as leaders, you know, we have to learn how to be intimate with other people as well. And that really is going to come when we can get to a place of confidence within ourselves and um, being able to just be fully us no matter what, you know? Um, and so I wanted to just first introduce everybody to my friend, Ruth Kadener. Um, we met uh, a few years ago. God connected us through another mutual friend. Um, we all have traveled uh, around the nations and have done ministry in various places. And Ruth is the person that I, I talk to. She's the lady that knows everybody. <laughs> she knows everybody. You know, she is a well-connected lady. She just loves the Lord and has been sent on, on many adventures with him. And what has always been so um, uh, impressed in my spirit about Ruth is she truly is a lover and a friend of God and is absolutely authentic and sincere and just full of joy. So welcome, Ruth. I just want to introduce everybody to you. If they don't know you, say hello. <laughs> Hello, wholehearted leaders around the world. I don't know, but I just feel like, you know, these people that are with you all the time are like really extremely hungry people. So we bless them. I bless them. I bless yeah. you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Yay. And what a fitting backdrop. I love that backdrop that you have for the whole world there. Because with Ruth, like everybody needs to know Jesus and the whole world needs to be loved. And she does everything really big and is, um, and is like, and she's in charge of the beautiful, powerful women. I put a lot of your info already in the, in the event thing to describe you and, and the link for your website and stuff. But you do so many things. You do so many things. But I just want to honor you and thank you for coming on today. I, when I was praying about who do I want to bring on to talk about intimacy? It was very quick. It was like, Ruth, it has to be Ruth because you are such a friend of God and uh, you just released your, your book, The Power of Obedience. And the most beautiful thing about reading your book, Ruth, is it really was raw. <laughs> it was very vulnerable. I mean, you share your whole, like you share your life testimony and your story. It's like your autobiography basically, but really it was a focus on the journey into the heart of God and how, how you've learned to have him do just in your one-on-one -on -one relationship with him to check your heart, to get your heart back to wholeness in those seasons of pain and disappointment, those kind of stories. And then just being obedient to that voice of the Lord in that place of intimacy with him and how that has, he's used you then to be intimate with other people. And to be able to really minister to them in healing and intimacy and, and, and it's just, you know, has done so many amazing things with you. So I just wanted to start, if you don't mind, just start with telling us a little bit about your story. I know it's in your book, but just a little bit about whatever you want to share about what helped you to just grow in that place of intimacy with God. Like, how did you get started what were the things that maybe you struggled with and what were the things that maybe had helped you to really know that, well, God really is real and he really does love you and, and you can hear his voice. Oh, wow. Um, you know, I told you a little bit of my story when, when we did the prophets, right. But, um, you know, I, as I said, you know, uh, to you before that, you know, ever since I know life, I was in fear and then as soon as I know life, my name was emotions more than Ruth first. <laughs> so, um, and at the same time, I'm always like into this world of, you know, supernatural crazy stuff. But at the same time, you know, um, we, I grew up in, in, a, in a home where, in, you know, we have half brothers and sisters and, and, and there's 10 of us, you know, so there's quite a lot of, you know, um, commotion in there. <laughs> And of course, uh, school didn't help. By 16, I really was tired and I just wanted, I wanted somebody to be there for me or give me the right attention that I want. But at the same time, you know, not that my parents are not beautiful, they are there for you, but you know how it is, right? Um, um, 
and we were introduced to so many, so many religions. So I knew there was a God, but I just didn't know who and where. But then when I was 16, I, I haven't slept. Like I would sleep around three, four o'clock in the morning so that people are going to be awake because I was having nightmares every day. And I, I told myself, you know what, if there's anybody, just take care of me. But don't get me wrong, okay? When I was young, like about five years old, my sister kept on saying, do you, have a, do you, you always have an imaginary friend. So I knew that God was actually like taking care of me ever since, but I just didn't recognize it was him. Mm -hmm. And um, by, by, by 16, when I prayed that prayer, you know, take care of me, whoever you are. And then a, a pastor came to my house, brought by my, um, my half sister and said, you know, Jesus wants to take care of you. The very words that I said. So that night I went inside my room, knelt down, broke down, you know, snot all over. <laughs> I raised my hand and I said, you know, if you're really real, you know, and if you can love me, this is my word. If mm -hmm. you can love me, I'll be yours forever. You can send me anywhere. That's what I said. So that covenant that we have until now, he never broke. I haven't seen him. So he he's the only constant in my life. I've never seen anybody like him so steadfast. Yeah. So I can't, I can't deny. I just can't deny. So what, for me, the door for intimacy is your encounter. The very encounter that you have with someone. I mean, I, um, before, before you, you have a relationship with anyone, you get really impressed with this person first, right? Mm -hmm. But with God, it's my, in, it's my encounter with him. That, that's the very first time I ever slept in my life. I'm like, in the evening, woke up in the morning, nobody can give me sleep, girl. So I'm like, okay, this is it. There's somebody there. There's, this is real. And then, you know, uh, out of out of that encounter, I was just I I fell in love quickly, and so I I just wanted more. I wanted more. That caused me to seek more. Mm -hmm. And you see, seeking is the walking towards intimacy. The Lord says, right? You you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. I sought Him, girl. <laughs> I sought. I just like you. I'm sure you're not gonna anybody who has been in in a situation where they love God, they will pursue God, they will share God, has sought the Lord, mm -hmm. and so seeking the Lord, um, with for me was breath of life. You know, mm -hmm. I can't. I just know I can't live with this situation again i don't want it i don't want to go back there all of a sudden the glory of god i felt the presence of god i felt i couldn't find that anywhere and so i pursued that actually no you know what he pursued me yeah. I, I just i just basically responded to that love and i was like you know when you when you when you just experience something you want that back right so i want to stay there i want to stay there so you know, um, being aware that he is real and he's a person and he wants to be with you and he wants to love on you and he wants to listen to you and he doesn't want to condescend and, or, or, you know, he just wants to lavish on you. Oh my gosh, you know, bring it on God. I mean, <laughs> be my friend forever. I mean, every single day. Then that brought me, of course, my identity. All of a sudden I'm someone. I never felt like I was someone. People don't know, always miss. I, I don't know about you, but I felt like I was misunderstood all my life. I'm like, oh, I didn't do anything. I'm actually a nice person, you know? <laughs> you know, but, I love, Ruth, when you said, um, you know, when you got a taste of that love and that intimacy, you wanted to stay there. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the hunger, you know, that I want um, all of you leaders to hear is there is this place where we have to steward that hunger uh, for that intimacy, that it does take effort. It does take um, the ability to set aside time and to pursue and to hunger. And it's much like, you know, we talk about husbands and wives in marriage, like intimacy and relationship comes when we seek each other out and we desire to want to spend time with each other. And, and we, we not just um, uh, receive that love, but we also give it back. Mm -hmm. and so it's one thing for God to love us and for us to be loved by him, but it's about shifting that into us, loving him back. I was mentioning worship is one of those areas for me that's quick. That's the first place I go. If I, if I feel like I'm, you know, in a dry place or whatever it is, I just got to shift into a place of worship because then my emotion will come along and we'll get into that place. And, and I think sometimes people struggle with that maybe a little bit. 
of uh, because we live so guarded and 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 stuff in life and we tend to protect our heart from pain and things that that we don't even realize that we do that with God sometimes too and so when we're able to get in that place of of knowing he loves me and he's the one pursuing me but I also have to pursue back you know I have to pursue back it's a two-way relationship right Mm -hmm. and you know what um I believe with all my heart when you start to understand that your source is God then you will go there Mm -hmm. You see the pride of men, the pride of people, they, they, oh, I'm busy. Girl, you have no life without God. There's no breath. There's no mercy. There's no, there's nothing in us that we can do without God. So just get it. We have to really, if you want to really be a leader, you cannot unless we know where we get our source. Because where, how, how can you manage life? How? I don't even know what's going to happen, right? So for me, it's just that posture of humility. I can't do it, Lord. You have to be there for me. Mm-hmm. And so I will make sure that I know where to go, what to do, how to do it with God. Otherwise, I don't want to do anything. Because I know already without God, I already am a mess. <laughs> so I, you know, I would rather be a mess with God than be a mess mess, you know? Right. <laughs> right. I was like, you know, I believe with you know, and, and, you know, when, once we are in that intimacy with God, you don't want to be anything else, but just be with him. And then God tells you what to do. Then he will say, he will say, you're going to be a leader for this. You're going to be a powerful. We're going to be powerful at this. That's what I mean. You see, we get because of that intimacy. I found out, oh, I actually have an identity. Oh, I actually have a purpose. Oh, I have actually a voice. So every type of insecurity I would have, and until, until now, I mean, this morning, I was just, you know, worshiping the Lord, and I remembered when I was five, and then this, and that, I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, Lord, you know, I, the, it doesn't grow old, it doesn't grow old, because I just love to be a child. I just love it. I mean, I started as a child, I'm going to die as a child, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> but business, um, um, business is something that we think we are doing something for God, but you know, guys, we can't do anything without God. We go first to God. I think that's part of your superpower though too, Ruth, is that what you just said about being a child, just being a child and if, with the father and, and just really growing in that place of knowing the father's heart. That's what I see that you steward so well, you know, and um, I want you to kind of share, if you don't mind a little bit, I know you've got some stories in your book about this, but what I, I, I just, my favorite parts of your book was you literally helping people as they read through the book. We got really insight into this journey that this conversation that you have with God, like you said, there's one place to have intimacy with him, but like being able to hear his voice and go on assignment. So to, to when you need a direction or when you needed an answer or you needed to hear his voice for something or or he dropped something in you and you went on an adventure with him and did something you never thought that you would be doing. Can you share a few of those stories just so that they get an example of kind of what that dialogue is like for you and the Lord? And especially some of these things that God's had little old Ruth, little you do these really big things. I don't want you, I don't want you to shy away from talking about them because I think it's really important that people recognize Every single person has the ability to be an influencer, to be a leader, if they're just willing to submit to the Lord in this way. And it's out of this place of intimacy, this friendship with him. He has sent you on many adventures. He has sent you in front of people, kings and ambassadors and, and to, the, to the garbage dumps. And he sent you everywhere to do some amazing things. And I just want you to share some of your stories because I think it really gives a telling of that like the po- title of your book, That Power of Obedience. Can you share some of those? Um, <clears throat> because we are in the you know world leaders, I will share to you how I was able to have access to the president. I'm not going to tell you which president, okay, guys? I'm not going to tell you which president. You have to read the book. <laughs> Um, after, uh, you know, I've done, I've done quite a few of events that God would just go and download because I want to partner with what God is doing. I want to find the movement of the Lord because I don't want to waste my time. 
I want, I, this is my prayer all the time. God, I don't want to waste my time. What are you doing? Where are you moving? I want to move with you there. I want you to use me there. And so uh, by the time I, uh, so I've done uh, quite a few of, uh, I've done quite a few of these events. But in this particular event, God told me, bring my politicians to me. Mm. And I'm thinking, bring my politicians to me in this country. I haven't lived for 27 years. I don't know anybody. I don't have any connection. I have no clue. I know the president and I know somebody else who's very popular, but they don't know me from Adam. <laughs> so he says, bring the politicians to me while you do another event after that. I'm thinking, okay. So first and foremost, how are we going to do that? Uh, you know what, God? Okay, let's do it. The first thing I did was I booked the hotel. Okay, listen, I don't blindly obey God. Re remember, I have done events already before, uh, but being led by the Lord. But with this, I already know I have to go and start. Once, uh, once you get a prompting and you know that you are in tune with God, you just go for it. Even if you, you bump your, your nose on a, on a glass window, just do it. Because you don't want to miss what God is actually wanting you to do. So you know that 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 uh, word there. Oh, is it really the voice of God? Is it really the voice of God? I mean, you've been praying to God, so it must be the voice of God. <laughs> so I'm like, for me, uh, as soon as I I get that got that prompting, I went straight to the hotel, booked the hotel, five star hotel. I wanted to make sure that there is a passageway for all these important people to go through. You see, I have no idea who these people are. I don't know how I'm gonna meet them. I don't have a lot of money to go and book all these things. I don't have a lot, but I have the word. So I booked that and all that. So that was like, I booked it like four or five months before. I had no idea it was election day, uh, girl. I, I didn't know, Cindy, that was election day. Why would they even bother just even looking you know, just even looking at an email of a person or even just, you know, talk to someone like me. They don't know anything. I don't have a platform. I don't have a church. That I, they don't know me. I have, I'm filch to them. Why would they talk to me even? So I was like, Lord, why didn't you tell me it was election day? And then, so I'm like, okay, you know, I'm just going to wait, Lord, I'm going to wait. And then and a friend of mine uh, introduced me to one girl who was wife of uh, a governor there. And, you know, she says, I'll help you. But of course, her, her son was running, her husband was running. So I'm like, of course, I didn't hear a word from these people, right? And I'm thinking, okay, God, five more weeks. I haven't heard anyone. I haven't done anything. I mean, Lord, where are they? Where are they? But one thing I, I learned about this journey with God is I don't beg. Uh -uh. Mm. I'm a child of God. I used to look like I'm begging. Although I'm not begging, I'm just giving them opportunity, but they don't understand. They think that you're begging, you know? So I, I went and I said, Lord, I'm not going to say anything. But the uh, on, on the four, usually when I do an event in another country, not where I live at, I would go there for um, four weeks before the event and then, you know, da -da 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 -da, you know, do the promotion and everything in that place because I never live in the place where I, I usually do events. So <laughs> I went there and I, this time I was already discouraged, okay? Um, I'm a super girl because I have a super dad, but I get discouraged. Super girl always gets discouraged. <laughs> I touched down the, the, the we touched down the tarmac and I was I was saying, God, I don't even want to go to these people anymore. I don't want to do anything. I just, I'm not very happy right now. I don't hear anything. There's nothing and in another four weeks. But you know what, God, thank you. I went to a church. They started telling me things, you know, oh, you are this, you are that. And I thought, I heard that before. You're an Esther to this nature. Oh, I heard that before. You know, you, you know when, you're, when you're not happy anymore, it's like, okay, God, I heard that. Oh, okay, two years ago. Okay, you know? Okay, so <laughs> this is me. And then I'm like, okay, God, okay, thank you, thank you. But I was just crying and raising my hands. I surrender, God. I surrender. I don't want these feelings. I don't want these emotions. I just follow you. You said, you said, you said, you know, his, his words never come, he's never going to come back void. It's always going to be in fruition. 
his voice is always going to create something. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, ah, you said, you said. And then there's another, that same, then there's another lady that came, oh, you're, I feel like you're a Daniel to the station, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, oh, I heard that before, Lord, I heard that. And then all of a sudden she says, and then she came back. And then she said to me, you know what? I feel like you're going to go and meet the president. And then she came back again. And she says, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to let you meet the president. I'm like, oh, okay, I heard that before, right? <laughs> Two years ago, I heard that before. Okay, prophesied over, you know. Two days after, she texted me and she says, oh, I need your passport. And I'm like, okay, this this is probably going to work, right? It's, okay, we're talking about two more weeks before the event. Nobody, nobody has ever said, oh, I'm going to buy a ticket. I'm going to go there. No one, nada. And I'm thinking, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm like, okay, let's just worship. Worship the Lord. He is good. And then... Um, I, I got a phone call, okay, come here at this time, at this hour, blah, blah. So I went, you know, so we were like, so I was just telling them, <laughs> I texted every single person I know, and I said, you know, pray, 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 maybe this is going to work. By the time we were there, we waited and 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 we waited. I'm like, okay, God, I'm enjoying this anyway. And then by the nth hour, I said to them, please don't stop me because I'm going to embrace this president. Because everybody's like, <laughs> I'm like, <sighs> you know, I have light, I have love, I'm just going to love on him and honor him so nicely. So I went in there, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> <they're> going, <laughs> you know, it's like so nervous. I'm like, and I look at this man, I thought, wow. I said, can I embrace you? I said, of course. So I embraced him. Hmm. And then we sat there and I kept on saying, Lord, it's only your anointing that's going to break the yoke. It's your anointing. Because I don't know what to say to this person. <laughs> I don't know him. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you know, you just obey. Okay, God. It's not blind, but it is, you know, in a certain way. So I'm like, while, while he was talking, I was just writing on my, my tissue paper. I need to find that tissue paper because that, that's really gold. So I was writing down words that God was telling me. By the time I stood up, I held on his, his, his shoulder and the, the, the pen, gold pen, okay, started to, this because you are this, so therefore you this. Because if you're that, then, you know, the, the, there was a gold pen, literally, that was like connecting all the words that I put on. And I started speaking that, and I had this word, uh, Bible verse over him. I just, you know, I, sp- I spoke it all over him. And it was so glorious. Still, a few more days, the event's supposed to come, right? And I'm like, you know, it was glorious. Okay. Um, for me, it was such an honor that I was able to, to do that. And it, it is only God who can do that. Come on. I mean, come on. Only God can do that. But the thing is, um, I was more excited that God was answering me than meeting these people. You know, I was like, whoa, the God of your universe. It doesn't cease to amaze me. It creates praise all the time in my heart. I'm like, wow, God, you're amazing. God, you're awesome. But God, you know, we're going to have this this group. I have this uh, this room full of food, you know, beautiful room. You know, Papa David's going to come, beautiful, beautiful. And there's nobody there. I'm like, okay. And God said to me, he whispered, do you think if I can give you the president, all these people are not going to (laughs) come? (laughs) <laughs> and on the day I have no idea who's gonna come I don't know how many people are gonna come I, I just surrendered and the people that needed to come came it was glorious I didn't care anymore whatever it was but I just knew God was there and as soon as I stood up on the stage I said you're not politicians here you're children of God so let's just relax you know so I feel so that was that was so amazing right so it was really really good so I, I got a lot of those stories. I mean, I mean, another story. One last one. Okay. Uh, huh? yeah. I was just, I was just going to say just to everybody, just to hear, can you just see, even as Ruth is sharing this story, just her simple faith in there was a word from the Lord and she just took action. Yes. She, she stood on the word and, and had to wrestle in her heart 
like when it didn't look like anything was going to happen, you know, she just, again, kept surrendering, kept surrendering, kept surrendering, kept coming back into, but you're good. And this is what you said. And, and, and even in the moments when her emotion was saying, I don't, even she's getting these amazing prophetic words. I've heard that before. I, you know, she was like, all right, whatever. Like she wasn't like in faith in those moments, you know, right. Because, because of everything there was just, that's real. You guys, we're going to have disappointments. We're going to have struggle. But what I wanted to highlight for you guys in the story is, is her tenacity to come back to the Lord, to come back to that place of humility and come back to that surrender and to hear his voice again, that she was able to be used, A, just to be in the room with the president of a nation and, and to have that favor and then to have the ability to just shift the atmosphere so that she could prophesy you know, what the, what the father was wanting to give to him. She was just an obedient messenger in that moment. And even then she still has this event uh -huh. that politicians are supposed to be at. And she's like, okay, we're two weeks away. And I don't, I, you know, like what's all this stuff, you know, who's going to be there. And then somehow or another, and I know we kind of skipped through that, but people showed up and came and it was a beautiful thing, but it was, it was just an act of obedience of, of, of having that favor and her heart posture of thankfulness, of gratitude, of appreciation, of surrender, and that place of obedience. And what I love what you just said is when, when these politicians are all there, you got up and you said, relax, everybody. <laughs> You're not politicians in here. You're just a child of God. You know, and, and that posture of that childlikeness that Ruth carries, that's what I want you to get that impartation from her is it's very much like Mama Heidi. I know Ruth knows Heidi and has ministered and, and stuff with her as well. And it's that same heart posture of um, Heidi Baker, for those who don't know. I didn't say her last name, just in case there's someone here that doesn't know who she is. Um, and being able to be in that posture of a, a laid down lover of the Lord, no matter what's going, and just the simple obedience, the ability to, to then shift the atmosphere and have these politicians listen. Ruth was able to be a leader because of her whole heart. She was able to lead in that place, in that environment with these politicians that, that impact national, governmental spheres of influence, the president, the governor, all these different politicians and people that were present, you know, ambassadors, these different people that God, God just puts her in the path of these people what was the first thing she did? She's like, can I hug you? I mean, that's just such a rude thing to do, right? Like she's, I just want to hug you. Is that okay? You know, because that love, that childlike love just exudes from her. And that's just the beautiful thing that she carries is the simple faith like a child. There's no pretension. There's no pride. It's, it's pure humility. And, and it's a, it's a place of, of really surrendering you know, and emptying yourself. You guys, we talked about this a little bit yesterday with Bill Vanderbush that we, we just got to die to ourselves. Mm. Like, you know, that, that, that we're fully surrendered um, to being used by him as a leader, that it's not about us puffing ourselves up or striving or trying to make something happen. Like she was like, listen, this is you, God, if it happens or if it doesn't happen, it's you. It's only going to happen by you anyway. It's just her obedience, though, of putting the deposit down on that hotel room, of getting the food ready and going, okay, God, you said you're going to bring the people. And then she says, you're not going to be politicians in here. You're just children of God. Yeah. You know, that there's no intimidation. There's no fear. There's no status or any of that. She didn't have to be in that place of worry or, or, um, comparison. If we're really going to lead and disciple the nations, as the word says, that's a picture of Ruth being able to do that. This little old me just putting together, having a little connection and then putting together this little meeting to just be a blessing. Her heart was to love and to serve and to be a blessing to the people that were in front of her. That is her heart's passion. Yes. You know? I, yeah. You captured it so nicely. At the end of the day, um, Cindy, you know, the Bible says, who, who are they that are wise? Those that bring people to God. And for me, it's not even just wanting to be wise and wanting to be good. 
I want people to encounter God because he's the only hope you get. There's just no, no life without God. I've seen it. I've seen it many times over. And there are times when I would, unlike Papa Bill, I ask him, do you ever have tantrums with God? I'm like, you are, so, I thought I was super girl. You are even super, super man. When she says Papa Bill, she means Bill Johnson, leader of Bethel Church. In case anybody is on here and doesn't know who that is. I mean, he would just say, because he would say, no, I, I don't have tantrums. Like, ah, I failed because I have tantrums. <laughs> you ask Bill Johnson if he gets tantrums? <laughs> And he says, no, that's, that's not how I roll. That's what he, he's so <laughs> gracious. He's so gracious. So for me, I'm like, wow. I totally have tantrums. <laughs> I know. So we, I mean, but, but then that is what God loves about us when we get very, because you see, for me, I, I just know for a fact that I lay there before God, even before I open my mouth, he already knows. So it's no need to pretend, oh, God, thank you, you're so holy. No, I just say, Daddy God, I'm really not happy with this. You know, I'm really not good at this. Lord, I really do not know how. Can you just embrace me? That's what I would just say. Can you just embrace me, Lord? Can you just hide me, God? Can you hide me? Please hide, hide me, hide me. Most of the time, uh, we have a hard time obeying and wanting to obey because of the shame that, that goes along with it, yeah. just in case just in case God doesn't show up. Mm. Oh my gosh, the very first beautiful, powerful women that we have done, God told me it's going to be eight to 10,000 people. 10% came. I prepared it. I prepared the entire arena. I, I, I paid for the arena. I don't even know how I, I did that. Like God, I got, I don't know, 12 people, one from uh, this, of all spheres of, the, of, of uh, influences in, in the women world. Uh, I got, a, I got a, a politician, a beauty queen. I got everybody. But there was very little people that came. And people even said to me, oh, even if it's a flop, you're still going to do it? I said, there's no flop in Jesus. Mm. I realized that it is the Lord who is going to bring I will not bring, but with me, it's not my, it's not my, um, it's not my problem whether these people are going to come or not. Don't get me wrong. I cried buckets because I felt like, Lord, you betrayed me. <laughs> I'm like, it's not nice. You know, that this, you know, all the effort and all that. But then God says, what is the posture there? And then I have to go regroup myself I'm like, Sorry, God. Okay. I, I thank you, but you have to heal me. Because along this journey that I have gone through, so many people put you down. So many people like, look at you. Look at you. Are you really sure you can do this? You know, things like that. Not, not even like they don't believe you. They show you that you are nobody. You can't do it. There's nothing in you. So when you do not hear God and obey God by three days you don't want to do what you feel god is calling you for so you really need to have that that deep connection otherwise you're just going to be like what the bible says a wind and like a wave tossed by the wind you don't want that you want you want i i i i encourage you to know that you're a child of god that you hear god and that you can follow god no matter what because what if, what if there were 10,000 people there? I missed it. Oh, but if there's only 800. But this 800 is going to be 800 times 800, right? So, but, you know, as I said, I'm human. I would want to go and see with my eyes. So just like everybody else, they said it's a flop. For me, it wasn't a flop, but it hurts me for them to even say that. They didn't see me. They didn't see my struggle. They didn't see how I went through that. But... Because I didn't give up, there's more, there's more. So, and, and my posture was always like, Lord, is there something in my heart that, that's not right with anybody along the way? <laughs> because I don't want that. Or otherwise, I'm not going to do anything anymore because I need to see God properly. You see, when you have any type of offense or whatever, I can't see God properly. I'm just always going to whine and complain and murmur and mm -mm, right? So I want my heart to be right with God. Okay, God, that's what you said. That's what was going to happen. Now, whether people look down at you or you, you, they, they put you to say shame or whatever, who cares? 
Now, at the end of the day, you have to go and, you know, take that all out because I don't want that. I want to go where God wants me to go. He told me to do it. I'll do it. I, I don't listen to anybody else but God. But at the same time, you know, there are times, of course, you have to be very wise. Like, you know, you have to be teachable. To be a good leader, you have to be teachable anyway. And God's going to go and bring you to the people. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, another week and my team, my, sm my very small team, I have, you know, very small team. <laughs> and all the tickets were still like stack up like this because nobody has bought the tickets. We're, we're trying to sell thousands of tickets, not just hundreds thousand because god promised thousand and it was it was still there i said oh chuck that ticket put it on the side let's go and put our nose on the floor and worship the Lord. <laughs> because what can you do there are there will always be and this is undeniable for any type of leader you are not um there will be a time when you know you're not in control god mm -hmm. has given you the grace to dominate where you are rule your world yes but there are times when you know, okay, God, I've done my part. You do the rest. Mm -hmm. I um, think that's huge, Ruth. I mean, what you just said is really, really big because I think sometimes, you know, it's that pressure to lead and to perform or to do the thing at the expectations that we tend to have on ourselves. And, you know, we talked about this with um, Bill Vanderbush yesterday, that there is a, we, we were never supposed to eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And yet, when we know we've done it, when, when we judge, when we discern even what we think is okay or not enough. And I'm thinking about, you know, this event that you're talking about, this is a major arena. You heard 10,000, you know, and, and God's, God's not a man that he would lie. It's just yeah. our perception of what 10,000 is supposed to look like brings our disappointment oftentimes because we don't always see the way he sees or know. And you, you said it, when you explained it, okay, there might have only been 800, but those 800, each person, you have no idea what that one person is going to impact and who they're going to impact. So it doesn't mean that God lied. It just didn't look the way that you thought it was going to. can't tell you how many times in my life I thought it was going to be a certain way and it didn't show up that way. And then what comes is disappointment. Right. And, and y'all hear me, disappointment is disappointing God from his throne as if he's still not ruling. Yeah. So we have to reappoint him. That's what Ruth does. And she says, okay, but you are God. You are God and I am not. It's not my will. Your way be done. Like there's this place of constant surrender. When she says nose in the carpet, like that's literal. Like I know, I, I, cause I know this about Ruth, but I also know this for me, you guys, I, there's been, there's been two occasions. I don't know if I've ever shared this story in here. So I'm going to share it real quick. Um, Two occasions in my life where the Lord said to get on my face. Mm. And one time um, was years and years and years ago. Um, I was in a little Methodist church and this was like stained glass windows and pews. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this was before we were doing contemporary worship. This is before we knew much of the Holy Spirit and all of that. This was very traditional Methodist church right? The prayer rail at the altar, the organ, okay? And God said in the middle of worship, the song leader is, you know, doing one of the hymns or whatever, and God says, get out on your face before me. Oh. I heard it in here. It wasn't audible, but it was here, and I knew it was shaking inside of me, and I knew I needed to go do that. Now, I'm sitting near the center aisle. I begged God. I said, can I go to the side and not the middle aisle, you know, because I'm like, everyone's going to see me if I go to the middle aisle. So can I go hide and do it on the side? I didn't hear an answer, but I felt like it would be okay because I asked yeah, and yeah. I felt like, but, but I felt this like urgency, like obey. Mm. Okay. And, and I knew, and this was like in like the first or second song in worship. So I knew we had a few songs to go, but I'm like, you want me to do what? You know, so I wrestled for at least a song to go, wait, I, I don't want to go in the middle. I don't want everybody to see me like, I don't understand. What are you, why are you making me, I'm having this conversation with God. And he says, get out. And there's a pillar, you know, like a po post or whatever that's on the edge of the church there. And there's a little aisle on the outside near the stained glass windows and all the pictures of the disciples. If anyone's ever been in a Methodist church, it's very, you know, traditional that way. But I knew I was going to get up and I was going to go down the aisle and just try to get on my knees there and hide behind the post so people right. couldn't see me. Okay. Right. My husband is sitting next to me. He has no idea what's happening. I don't, I can't tell him. 
So I just, I just get up and excuse myself and I, I go past a couple of other people like I needed to go use the restroom real quick or something is probably what people thought. But by the time I took two steps forward and I hid right behind the post, I got on my knees and immediately fell. The spirit of God came and fell upon me. My face was in the carpet and I'm bawling. Try, I'm talking snot crying bawling before the love of God just overwhelmed me in that act of obedience and I'm trying really hard to hold it in. And I realized after a while, the songs are about to close and it's going to be time for the sermon. <laughs> you know, so, so I get up as quickly as I can, wipe my face, walk, run to the back through the cry room where the kids are and stuff. And that was one time where there, I just knew, mm-hmm. and we don't always get them this way, you guys. Um, sometimes they're super subtle. But there was this, there was, there was something to that act of obedience. I can't tell you immediately what broke or changed in that, but I know that something shifted in my life in that moment, especially in my ability to hear him and to obey and to discern his presence. I'd never felt the power of God like that before. This was before I knew anything about the Holy Spirit, anything about the prophetic, anything about, like, this was way before all that. Right. Okay. And there's only been a second time where the Lord told me that it's almost always in the middle of worship, but, but, and he told me to get on my face before him and just kind of keep my face in the carpet. So when she says no to the floor, like that's a literal thing. It's a literal, and I've done this before willingly. I've only had two times where the Lord told me to do it, but I've done it willingly. The posture of the heart having to be completely surrendered before him and going, you are God and I am not. Yep. Yeah. I don't get to have an opinion. Mm-hmm. really you know it's his opinion and and he will direct your steps as a leader and in, into who you're to influence and how you're to influence but i wanted to highlight this especially when you because of that place of disappointment it's a dangerous place look at how ruth shared you know just being raw with god you know there have been disappointments where i i've said that to the lord as well i'm like i don't understand this god mm-hmm. but, I, but i know you're good Mm-hmm. I know you're with me mm-hmm. and know you have a plan mm-hmm. and I'm just here to obey whatever it looks like and you know what um with this disappointment it's it's almost like you're right you know it it's actually wrong expectations yeah our our expectations are actually so high on the Lord because he's God and that's a beautiful place and you should never change that you should never change that because he can he's he's more than that but you know with us you know it's, it's we always have that and so what what happens is we get consumed with that that's the danger when you get consumed with that disappointment disappointment more than the worship when you you know more than praising more than all more than wonder of the lord so staying there is the is the very very scary part what i do with that is i remove from my heart and my mind and everything in me, for example, I'm being consumed with disappointed in the ministry. What mm-hmm. I would do is literally, prophetically, I would just remove it. I don't want this in my heart. It's, re- it's keeping me away from God. Lord, can you please just wash it for me? Or take it if it's not for me. I, it's, if it's not for me and, and I'm just taking it, you know, I don't want that. Because you have to know what it is that keeps you away from seeing the love of God in your life. What is it that's actually causing you to, to not be intimate with God? Because at the end, as I said, that's your source. So what I would literally do is I'll put it off. Lord, I, I, you know, okay, I'll, this blanky thing. You know when you're a baby, you have a blanky? And your mom wants to wash the blanket and you don't want to wash a blanket because that blanket smells perfect, you know? But God, you know that you know what happens when that blanket is completely bad, it has a lot of bacteria already and all that. So you God will just will remove it off so that you're gonna have space for refreshing. At the end of the day, nobody's gonna take that away anyway. So he's gonna give it back to you, but clean and proper again proper again this so is what happens it becomes an idol things that we are so focused on especially with leaders and pioneers and those people that actually takes care of people you it becomes an idol and you don't want anything to do with idolatry because anything that sets itself higher when you wake up what is what you, what are you thinking oh i need to go and do this what are you thinking oh i must do that no when you wake up oh holy spirit you train yourself i train myself and i'm not i, I and 
I'm not saying that I got there already. Every time I, I get I get to speak or I get to do this, I always remind myself. I always like, you know, I I I'm, I always preach to myself because we're humans. <laughs> but you know, I I I make sure that the pattern that I have now in my mind is going to be different. I mean, just last night I was actually talking because talking to my um, to my assistant to my my co laborer you know talking to her about my heart you know all all these things that I see and and the, the things that is not good and the things that's not that's good I mean I cannot deny that either this disappointment you cannot be free from unless you actually face that but if that makes it but if that is bigger to you now then the love of God then the power of God then the wonder of God it's not gonna work you are stuck so you have to go back in there and say, God, I'm disappointed with this. Lord, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to give it up or not? You always have to be ready to give up things. You cannot hold on to things. You hold on to things that becomes God to you. Then God's not going to be pleased with that. He's going to take it away because you know why it's not good for you. Not because he's a bad God. He, it's not good for you. You know, just like a mom or a dad. You know, oh, that, that, you're, you're becoming addicted to that. Oh, I'm going to take that away from you. That's not right for you. Correct? So yeah. I feel like, you know, just a normal, just a normal life. You, you come to, to think of it, it's logical. that you know, if there are things in our lives, so it becomes, um, you know, bigger. I'm afraid that this person's not going to go and, and, and be there. You know, if I stayed there and not full surrender, I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore. Because, you know, there's going to be more lies that I'm going to believe. But you know what? We hide. I love it that God always say that I hide you in my opinions. I hide you in my wings. I, and, and, you know, um, I am never growing up. I'm always five years old when it comes to me and daddy God. I am five years old. I stay there. I don't care. You know what? What people say, oh, you have to go and grow up. Oh, you can grow up yourself. Go for it. But I would stay as a child because I just want to be loved. I want to be loved in every situation. That's me. That's my personality. I don't know every, God has his own way of speaking to you. But I, you know, God says it's a gift to have a baby, a baby faith, right? You know, it's a, it's one of the gifts, discernment, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, right? But a childlike faith. So you get disappointed because you have a childlike faith. That's fine. But don't stay there. Don't stay there. We have to go give that to face it. Tell God that it's not nice. This is how I feel. But God, I surrender. That's yeah. it. You know, and then you, God <laughs> refreshes you. You have to give it to the Lord. Otherwise, your heart is full. Your heart is, what is your heart full of? What is your mind full of? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that you're full of, that's what's going to manifest. Right? So you would want to be full of wonder. You want to be full of faith. You want to be full of love. That's what you want. Because in everything you do, without that, it's futile. Oh, yeah, you have a lot of money. And then? Oh, yeah, you have a lot of followers. And then? <laughs> but if it's not eternal value, you don't want to do that. You have to have an eternal value. How does that work? Relationship. Love. In everything you do, you do it for, you, for the glory of God. Whatever we're doing, we're doing it for the glory of God. This has eternal value because we're intentional and acknowledging God all the time. And num number one in intimacy is trust. You have to trust yeah. that God is good, period, because yeah. he is. There's nothing else. There, there's no one else as good and as faithful as the Lord. Where else can we go? Nowhere. So I would, I would rather go and be, Lord, this, 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 and this, and then, and then I come out of that position fresh again, fresh again. Why? Because we had an exchange. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm an exchange student. I give God, he gives me something else. You yeah. give God your disappointment, he gives you joy. You give God your worry, he gives you peace. What is, you know, <laughs> but we don't want to go to God because we're busy. We're busy feeling miserable. <laughs> <laughs> or we're busy thinking, oh, I need to go do this. I need to, that there's no striving in the children of God. It's, you know, I mean, even in John 15, it says, you know, you just abide, abide in me. But that doesn't mean you're lazy. That doesn't mean you procrastinate. That doesn't mean you have to wait and wait. No. I mean, as soon as I hear God, I, I take action. And it, it, along the way, I fall, I, 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 I get joys and I get, I get sorrows, but it always leads me to God. He has to. 
So I am, <laughs> there was a, there was a time, um, this radical obedience, I, I'm just going to go and tell you this. I feel like I need to go and tell you this story. Yes, when I was in, uh, when I was in Belgium, um, I, I think I've told you this story already in the prophetic, but I feel like the, your leaders have to go and hear this. When I was in, in Belgium, the Lord told me to speak to the lady behind me, which is, uh, uh, I mean, we were in a five-star hotel having breakfast. Why would I bother someone else behind me? And she's on her own. She's a woman. You know, it's like, and I'm going to tell them, oh, the Lord has a, has a word for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, only radical people would do that, right? Because, I mean, especially especially in, in that type of environment where, you know, they, I, I don't know about you, but, you know, I've been to many spheres of influences, but, you know, when you're in a five-star hotel, you're probably resting or you don't want anybody. <laughs> but God was like, you know, being God. So I said to my husband, babe, you go ahead, get ready. I'm going to talk to this woman first because I don't care whether they, they, they reject me or not. I will listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. I'll do it even if I'm wrong. Or even if I probably heard him wrong. But you know what? What if I hear him right? I, uh, so, I mean, so I went to this girl. I said, um, I am so sorry. No, actually, I'm not sorry. But I feel like, you know, God is telling me to go and, you know, tell you this, this. So she, to cut the story, so she, she, she was bawling, right? She was crying. Mm -hmm. She just arrived in Belgium, da, 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 da. So before that, um, I was asking the Lord, Lord, do you want me to go to Uganda? And what do you know? I asked her, where are you really from? She says, Uganda. So, I'm like, <laughs> so when, you, when we have this um, intimacy with God, he tells you things. And if you have any questions, he answers you through your obedience too. <laughs> it's like, if I didn't obey, I will never know that he's actually telling me really to go to Uganda. Because of all places in Europe, I'm in Europe, in a five-star hotel with this woman who's... Uh, I have no idea who she was, but she says she's from Uganda. So God was answering me, but God was answering her cry and God mm -hmm. wants to love on her. But my mind, what is my mind? My mind is, okay, God, we're going to love on her. That's it. That's it. You know, your life is supposed to be a channel of love, whether you're a leader, whether you're a, a spectator, whether you're a follower, who cares, whoever you are, whoever I am. We are channels. We are ambassadors of Christ. We love people. We introduce them to Jesus. That's the most important thing in life. Nothing else for me. Yeah, that's so good, Ruth. Ruth, could you do us a favor and just release a prayer of blessing over these leaders and impartation of, of what you carry in this place of intimacy and humility and obedience? I just think there, there is a grace that you carry in that, in that childlike faith. Um, I would just love for you just to pray and release that to us. Mm, thank you, Lord. Well, in, in 1 John 4, 4, he says, you are a children. You are God, God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he in you that, than he that is in the world. Can you imagine if you would always every day think that greater is God in me than anything else that I face? And greater is God in me than whatever struggles my people are going through greater is God in me than the things that I see around me so I, I I just I just say God thank you that your our eyes will be open every single minute that there's an awareness of your greatness within us that, that there is an increased awareness for these leaders Lord that you have chosen them to be your vessel chosen them to be your temple chosen them to be um the change in this world you have chosen them lord to be your representative on this earth the light of the world the salt of the earth father i pray that as you have given me so much faith and a childlike at that i just impart to them god um an understanding of what that looks like an understanding of who you look, how you look like in this situation. Father, I pray that their hearts will be so ready right now to receive that gift of childlike faith, gift of radical obedience. 
I cancel, I see this confusion in you guys. I cancel anybody who's confused of, oh, but God, if I do this, how is that? There's no but God. There's always only yes, God. Yes, God, I'll follow. Yes, God, I'll obey. Yes, God, show me. Yes, God, fill my heart with wonder. Yes, God, fill my mind with awe. Yes, God, fill me up with praise. Yes, God, yes, God. And whoever in, 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 in whoever hears me that have pain in your heart because of offense or discouragement from other people, I say, Father, thank you. Bring them back to that place. Let them deal with it, but not on their own, but with you and be healed in the mighty name of Jesus, even in their subconscious mind. Father, increase and heighten the the awareness of their brilliance heighten that in them god heighten their awareness that you are never ever gonna leave that you're the best thing that ever happened to them thank you god in jesus name amen amen thank you so much ruthie so you guys this is ruth's book it's the power of obedience look at her little happy self in that cover <laughs> she's just one of the freest people i know and um this is her book you guys can get it on amazon but i am going to be giving one of these away in our in our drawings and our giveaway at the end of the week just so you guys know um it's called the power of obedience from nothing to something so you guys can grab that and you can hear all the stories and better detail and stuff that are in there and more so thank you so much ruth for joining us thank you we appreciate you you and your time today all right bye-bye